Hello and welcome to this video. Today we will continue exploring character rendering in Cocos Creator and take a look at rendering here. Before we begin, let's first take a look at what we're creating today. Here, rendering is characterized by this particular type of specular that goes along the flow of the hair strand. For most materials we're familiar with, the specular is usually a circular shape. But if we take a look at the specular on the hair, as we can see from these reference images, we can see the specular always goes along the flow of the hair, and this is the case with straight hair and curvy hair as well. In terms of the specular color, we can see that specular color is primarily white, which is most likely the color of the light source. This basically tells us that hair should be treated as a non-metal material. We can also see a second variation of the specular color that seems to be a brighter version of the albedo color of the hair. So this is what we're trying to achieve today. We want a stripe of specular rather than a circular specular as we see in other materials. And we need at least two stripes of specular so that we can represent different variations of the specular color. So why does hair have such a different specular compared to other materials? In the physical world, when light hits a surface and gets reflected, the reflected light travels in a cone shape. Every single ray of light in this cone displays the same characteristics of reflectivity. This is called an isotropic reflection because isotropic literally means identical in all directions. This is also why the typical specular is a circular shape. When it comes to hair, light is reflected on every single string of hair. Specular can only be seen in the vertical direction that goes along the flow of the string. On the horizontal direction, because a single string of hair is too thin, the specular is barely recognizable. And when hundreds of thousands of hair strings press together and we get a hair strand, these specular in vertical directions come together and we get a stripe of specular rather than a circle of specular. In other words, hair can only produce specular in the vertical direction that goes along the flow of the hair, and on the horizontal direction, the specular is barely visible. This is called an anisotropic specular because it is produced by different characteristics in reflectivity in different directions. So how are we going to implement this shader? We are already familiar with calculating the dot product of the normal vector and the light direction vector, which gives us a float number that indicates the bright side, dark side shading properties. Specular can be calculated in a very similar fashion, except that rather than light direction alone, we also need to take into consideration the observation vector or the direction of the camera. So instead of two vectors, we need to work with three. We can do that by getting the half vector of the light direction vector and the observation or the view direction vector first. To do that, we simply add the light direction vector and the view direction vector together and normalize the result. As we can see, the result points exactly at the middle of the two vectors, which is why it is called a half vector. Now we can use the half vector and the normal vector to calculate the dot product. Now in terms of the specular intensity, we know that specular is a spot of concentrated light, so it will have a very high value. We also touched upon this in the previous video that light is usually distributed in a normal distribution. This is why we are using an exponent for the intensity parameter for our specular. First, the specular intensity will increase exponentially as the parameter increases. Secondly, if we take a look at the exponent curve, it looks very similar to half of the normal distribution curve. So here is the function we're going to use to calculate specular. You'll probably already recognize it as the link phone function for calculating specular, which is the most commonly used function for specular calculation. 
However, keep in mind this is only applicable to isotropic specular, as we discussed earlier, is not exactly fitting for hair. So what exactly is wrong with our specular function here? We already seen that specular goes with the flow of the hair strand and has little to do with the overall structure of the hair. So the normal vector here is not exactly what we're looking for. What we need is a vector that describes the direction of the flow of the hair. We're not sure exactly what that vector is for now. Let's just call it vector t. With vector t, we'll be able to use the bling form function that we came up with earlier. But here is another problem. Dot product is not exactly the value we're looking for. We know that dot product is actually the cosine value for the angle between the two vectors. But what we need here is the sine value of the angle. So we need to do a little bit of arithmetic to get the sine value from the cosine value. So how are we going to get vector t? We know that 3D models have different sets of data stored in their vertices, including the positions for said vertices, the UVs, the orientation of said vertices or the vertex normals, and vertex tangents. Now, vertex tangent is a vector perpendicular to the vertex normal and parallel to the surface of the model. And of course, with those two vectors, we can come up with a third vector that is perpendicular to both the vertex normals and the vertex tangents, which is usually called binormal vector or bitangent vector. Now, most 3D models already have their vertex normal and vertex tangent data already stored in their vertices. However, for binormals or bitangents, we have to use the vertex normal vector and the vertex tangent vector to calculate the cross product to get the vector. And this binormal or bitangent vector is the t vector that we're looking for. Now that our specular function is complete, it still doesn't quite look like hair. The problem is our specular is too uniform, whereas hair specular will have much more jittering between different hair strands. We can introduce more jittering to our hair specular by using a grayscale map. We're going to use the value from this map to modify the t vectors so that we'll have a much randomized and natural looking t vector to calculate the specular. We can use the same method as we used to get the bling form function and add the vertex normal vector multiplied by our jitter map, then add to our bitangent vector. This will yield us the half vector of the two after normalization. To finalize our specular calculation, we can declare a new color parameter and multiply it by our specular function and this will be our specular output. So where does our specular output sit in the rendered pipeline? We touched upon this issue in the previous video. And again, in Cocos Creator, we use the metal roughness workflow and have no direct access to the specular channel. You might be thinking we can use it to modify the roughness channel, but this is not exactly advised. The easiest way to work around this is to set your roughness value to a constant 1 or 0 so that all specular generated from the pipeline will disappear and then add your specular output to the albedo channel. Now that we have specular that look like hair specular, but still it looks very intense. This is because we haven't really put into consideration the gaps and occlusions between different hair strands. This is very easy to fix. All we need is the ambient occlusion map for the hair. Now that the shader is complete, let us finalize the look as it is artistically intended. First, we need to switch the shader method from opaque to transparent. Hair is usually textured with transparent textures. To utilize the alpha channel, we need to enable alpha test for our shader. This will discard the unwanted pixels from the texture and give us the transparent look as it is intended. 
you probably notice that there's something weird going on with the depths of our model. By default, objects closer to the camera will be rendered to the frame buffer first. Then a random pipeline will determine the fragments that are not obscured by any objects in the front and render them based on the depth buffer. Then fragments obscured by other objects will not be rendered at all. This is obviously to optimize render performance as there is no need to render fragments that are not seen. But in transparent mode, the pipeline will render in a backwards order, starting from the objects further away from the camera first. This is, of course, to make sure that transparent object will be properly rendered. But it could also potentially mess up the depth of the model. To fix this issue, keep in mind to enable depths right in the pipeline options to force fragments closer to the camera to be rendered on top of those further away from the camera. You can enable this option in the shader code as well. This concludes our exploration of hair rendering in Cocos Creator. Thank you for joining me and I hope to see you soon.